hear the wanderer alone and tempest tossed. No storm can hide that peaceful radiance beam me. Since Jesus came to seek and save the lost, give me the Bible, holy message shining. Welcome once again to this year Bible Studies Words of Wisdom. I'm your host, Pastor Elario Davis. And I'm your co-host, Pastor Denny Mokolok. I'm so happy once again that you are joining us. And remember to share the link and invite your friends that they will be able to be blessed as well. And as we start, we want to open up with a word of prayer as we begin our program today. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your providence today that you allow us to be here at ETN and we conduct another, the second part of this, this seminar, Fighting the Big Sea. Father, we pray for all our viewers if they're struggling, fighting with cancer or the spiritual Big Sea, which is covetousness. Father, we ask that they may find healing and freedom in Jesus Christ. Alice, we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, so in our previous studies, we, this is the general study of this series, is our Health and Happy Bible Seminar. So we are dealing with health at the same time with a spiritual truth that it conveys um, from the health uh, aspect of it. Yes. We studied in our previous lesson about the big C. And what we learned about the big C, right. that the big C was the fearful, fearful and terrible cancer. Cancer. All right. You know that cancer really is, um, it occurs when the body's the natural cell they divide, but then they form abnormal cells, all right? And then these are then called cancer cells, all right? And so the body continues to fight against these abnormal cells, and then it's a constant struggle, and every day our body is fighting against these abnormal cancer cells. And we know that the body um, cells in the body is over, over the, in the trillions, all right? And so uh, every day there's an ongoing war within our body. The problem comes when you know, the, the, the abnormal cells, they, they, they gather in a mass, and then like Pastor said, they, they met a, met metastasize. Metastasize, all right? And then that, that creates a, a real problem, and then they are, the person is diagnosed with a full-blown case of cancer, and then they have to begin treatment. But as we were discussing in the first part, there are four steps that we identified that we could fight cancer, all right, to prevent cancer is if you are consuming alcohol or tobacco, that you avoid con the consumption of both these substances, all right? If, um, avoid also risky sexual behavior. Avoid eating meat, all right? Uh, you could start by reducing the amount of meat that you eat, and if you can completely get off of meat, it is better, right? Because the objective is to eat animal and uh, plant-based uh, foods, right? Because plant-based foods have the big P. Uh -huh. so cancer and that is phytochemicals. phytochemicals all right and so when you are consuming the the, the natural foods uh, uh, for vegetables and fruits you want to eat from a variety of colors because each color of fruit and vegetables it contributes to the different phytochemicals that our bodies need to fight cancer and then we talk about the big spiritual sea See, that's where right? we end up that yeah. is where we end up and that is covetousness all right, and so Pastor, you want to lead us as we begin this um, part of where covetousness started. All right, so let us go there today, my friends, as we continue. So this cancer of covetousness, it started in the mind of a heavenly being. All right, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah chapter 14 and verses 12 to 14, it reminds us that um, Lucifer was created perfect in heaven all right and because he was created perfect they were not no the minimal suspicious that sin could ever appear in a perfect being but the bible says because he started to covet mm -hmm. he started to covet god's kingdom god's power he started to covet what belongs precisely to God, and that's where the big C of covetousness started, and that thing, Lucifer then, because the son of the morning, he was an exalted angel, and instead of worshiping God, he decided to covet 
God's worship for himself. And he expresses his selfishness using the I word. Remember, I use it several times. I will lift up my throne if I will be like the Most High, and I will put my throne above the north and worship. And, and you know, he covets God's position. He committed to be like God. And that's where things started, like to take the place of God. Remember that there is only one God and, and nobody else can be God because God has a quality that only God has. He is, he is without beginning and without ending. Yes. And Lucifer was a creature. So I just wanted to read that from God. scripture for you, Pastor. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. All right. So five times that word I is repeated. All right. And notice that's where the problem of sin begins. Somebody say, if you take out I out of sin, you won't have sin. Yes. Because sin begins with selfishness, with that covetousness and selfishness. They are synonymous. So therefore, my friend, this is where it all began in heaven. And God, you know, gave Lucifer a um, free will. He could think, he could analyze. God did not uh, have him like, like the man, you cannot think for yourself. You just have to obey me blindly or brainwash. Satan was not brainwashed. Satan could choose. Satan could see, he could understand. But he chooses to be like God and he knew that it was wrong, but he continued and he did not adhere to God's. Yes, and so the story began with Lucifer, this heavenly being in heaven, mm -hmm. right? He began with this selfish attitude. But we see that this spiritual cancer then invaded the lives of Adam and Eve. All right, it started in heaven and then it came down, this problem came down to earth. All right, we see that Adam and Eve they ate from the forbidden tree. And today, the test isn't a tree. What is this test? I write Leviticus chapter 27, verses 30 to 32. As we will see, it says, And all the tide of the land, whether of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, it is the Lord's. <laughs> it is holy unto the Lord, and concerning the tide of the herd, or of the flock, even whatsoever passes under the rod, the tent shall be holy unto the Lord. Amen. Right? So what Leviticus is telling us, that a tenth of all our income, of all our produce, you know, it belongs to God. As a matter of fact, it's not just the tenth that belongs to God, but the hundred percent. And so God asks us to return faithfully what is required from us. Okay, and we know that um, this concept of returning tithe, it happens on two levels. It, 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 um, it happens on the level that we recognize that God is creator. And if God is creator, God is owner of everything. Amen. And also, um, this idea of returning our tithes happens at the level of having a loving relationship with our God. Because as God uh, invites us to return to Him what belongs to Him, He asks us to recognize Him as our God, but also as our Savior that wants to uh, be a part of our daily life. And so He asks us to trust Him. All right? Uh, returning our tithes, it is an exercise of our faith. And many times we can't understand how this could work out financially for us, but God invites us to trust Him, to have faith in Him, to understand that He's a loving God and that He will take care of us just like parents, uh, and He is this loving God. And so there's an example right here, Pastor. There's an example. It says, if I make a thousand dollars, how much should I give? How much, how much should I return to God? All right, and, and we know the tithe is a 10% of all that all our increase. All right, so the 10% of $1,000 would be $100. So how much should we return uh, back to God? All right, and there we have it, $100. But as we see in the, in the verse, the tithe was not limited only to finance. All right, like we mentioned, the tithe uh, um, is for all the produce that you have. We see the seed of the land, the fruit of the tree, all right? The Bible says it was holy unto the Lord. Mm. All right, there's another aspect of the tithe, Pastor. Just like the Sabbath, the Sabbath is holy. 
You know, marriage is holy. The tithe also is holy. You know, because just like marriage, uh, just like the Sabbath, they are set aside for a specific purpose. This tithe is also set aside for a specific purpose as well. And the purpose uh, in our time is to further the gospel in our world. In the, in the, in the Old Testament time, it was to support the, the work of the temple. And today, we support the work of the spiritual temple, which is God's church Amen. upon this earth. All right. And so, like I was saying, the, the tithe it involves the, the fruit, the seeds, and even the herds. And so you might say, but I don't have any money to return to God, but maybe you have a mango tree. All right. Maybe you are growing um, sheep or cattle, or maybe you're planting corn. All right. So all we're saying right here, according to what the Bible requires from us, is that um, it, you should also uh, return to God from these produce, all right? And, so, and so you some people, some people mm -hmm. believe, Pastor, just like um, the, the, uh, the other churches, apart from Seventh Day Adventists, just like the Sabbath was kneeled to the cross, you know, the, the, um, several other things they say was kneeled to the cross. Mm -hmm. and some people, um, not, not Seventh Day Adventists, they believe that the, the tithing system. Was also nil at the cross because it was Old Testament. It was part of the the, the, the requirements as we see in Leviticus. But we know that the tithing the tithing system is something that existed prior to the to the to the Jewish people that as they were identified as a nation. Because as we find in inspiration, even Adam and Eve they return a faithful tithe to God. We have Abraham returning a faithful tithe. We have Jacob. We have Moses. All of them, you know, they return a faithful tithe. And one of the biggest uh, challenge in the crisis we see in Malachi, that is a projection for the end time people, mm -hmm. is also this spiritual crisis of covetousness. Yeah. Once again, it, God is I, calling I, his people to fight this uh, spiritual cancer of covetousness by returning a faithful tithe. So All right. Very good. So, Pastor, then you are saying then that this big, this spiritual big P is philanthropy? Yes. Philanthropy, it is giving God what is belong to Him, His portion, and that His portion is the tithe. Yes. So God's prescription for spiritual cancer is philanthropy. Philanthropy, and oh. what are the consequences if we don't follow the prescription? It says in Malachi three nine. Yep. It says the money it receives a curse. If we say, "All right, it's too much. We we won't do it." All right, all that money that we withheld, even though we might think, oh, well, I, I will be covering my expenses, it becomes a curse to us. Malachi 3 9 says, Ye are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. All right, and as okay. the Bible says, in what have we robbed you? It says, in the tithes and the offering. Okay. And so, this is a very serious problem, Pastor. And I know uh, so, to be under a curse is not a nice thing. So, that means to so say, technically, what? we are learning here is that philanthropy is giving, is returning, is doing something practically that is, is not our nature because we are born in sin. And yes. because we're born in sin, that is covetousness, we want to keep back everything. Yes. We want to hold back everything for ourselves. We become selfish. Yes. Right? And the problem is not only with withholding what we have. The, the problem will come now when we withhold everything we have, but then we want even more, we want want more and, and, and even pull back what God say yes. belong to him as the creator. Because you mentioned two aspects of the tithes, because it recognizes him as the creator and also it supports, you know, the his cast here on earth. So philanthropy, my friend, is a big word. It means that we should give, we should let go. And precisely God teaches us how to be a philanthropist in returning first his tithes. And also the Bible talks about offerings. So uh, God don't want us to be selfish. He don't want us to be covetous. Yes, he will give us, he bless us. And also he reminds us that there are certain things that we need to uh, acknowledge that he is the one who provides for us. Because the Bible said the gold is mine, the silver is mine, the cattles, cattles upon a hill, upon a thousand hills are mine. But God share with us, and whatever God gives us, He gives us the strength to make riches. He gives us health, 
he gave us the energy, he gave us lands and property and everything. But God is saying, there is a portion that belongs to me and there is where the big P come in. So, so the philanthropy. So let us be faithful in that All right. hand. So on the other hand, philanthropy also has boundless benefits. It is a responsibility, it is a duty that we have. You know, as we recognize that God do, does everything for us. He, he created us. He, he tells us, you know, be in control of uh, this new life, this, this uh, everything that I have given to you. And remember me, it says in um, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse Amen. 8, it says, it says um, um, don't forget that it is God that gives you power to gain wealth. And why does the Bible tell us that? Because it's easy to forget that it was God that had blessed us. And <laughs> you know we could increase in, in, in all the blessing that God gave us, whether it's our house, our income, you know, our family, our health, and all of these things. It's easy for us to forget. And so we must remember that it is God that gives us power to get wealth. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it, get, it tells us this boundless benefit. Already says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And what God wants to do is to open the windows of heaven. You know the reference for this word window, the same reference as when God allowed the flood to come upon the earth. You know, God opened the windows of heaven and then that massive flood came when Noah built the ark. You know, that's, that's a very interesting um, association that the Bible has when we study original word in Hebrew. All right, we see that God will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings for us. Blessings that um, if we keep our money, we will never receive. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, if we, if we withheld it, we'll receive a curse. But God wants to give us his blessing. And God is pleased when people test his promise. All right, so we could test God with this. He says, prove me in this. All right, and then he, he welcomes this challenge. He says, put me in yes, this. Exactly. Prove me in, in, in other words, God is saying, when you obey me, when you do what I say, you will be blessed. Yes. You will have enough to support your family and, and also to, to get along in life. But, you know, there is that temptation, Pastor, that, that you know, sometimes we believe that if we give what we uh, have, we will run short. Yes. And that we will not have enough. So that's why we are afraid to give. Sometimes it's not because... You know, we don't know we should give, but it's because we don't have faith. We don't have that trust. And sometimes we have our kind of thoughts in our mind. But all these things come out because there is some kind of mistrust, whether in God, in His Word, or in people, or in someone. But so we, the we point that, is very important there too. We see that trust God. The turning tide also happens on a spiritual on a spiritual level, it is not just a physical action exactly. or a financial action. It is a spiritual because it requires that we trust God and we have faith in Him. That's, that, that's the know, point. Logically, financially, if we give, if we end up with less, we won't be able to cover the expense. But we trust that God will work it out. God, God will balance our financial equation. All right. So it is. It is a. It is a spiritual nature that. And something we need to experience. We need to prove God. We need to put God to the test. All right? And as we see here, First. As, as God asks us to return the tithe, it says, God not only wants one-tenth of my money, God wants more. God wants ten-tenths of my life. That means 100%, not just 10%. Amen. God wants 100% of my life. And, and how uh, do we show this surrender of the 100% to God? In Romans chapter 6, verse 4, it says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like Christ was raised up from the dead, the glory of the Father, even so should we walk in the newness of life. And this is how we give the 100% of our life to God, the 10 tenths of our life to God. We, yeah. show, we show our surrender to God by our baptism. That is uh, the, the meaning of baptism, is giving 10 tenths of your life to Jesus. Amen. All right, so there here then is a test that God is asking us. Remember, as Pastor just mentioned, what would you do in her place? Yes, there is this story, this story. Remember the story of, of, um, of the woman, uh, the 
the, the, the woman of, of, of the... It was a Tishbite. They call it, yes, she was from the... From Gilead. The land of, from a foreign land. She was not a Christian to, per se from was the Israelites. Jewish. Of the Jewish, but, Jewish, but, but it's God, she believed in God, all right, and she uh, believed that God somehow would bless her, would, would, would prosper her. And God told her that, um, you know, to feed Elijah, to attend him, and he will come and you will give him whatever you have and share with him. But yes. precisely when Elijah came, she had nothing less but the last plate of food for that day, Pastor. No, the question is. Put yourself in there was also place. there was also this famine upon the land because remember this happened in the context when Elijah prayed to God that there will be no rain in Israel for, for three and a half years, and so it was right in that God was providing for Elijah all this time. Exactly. Uh, through a raven that brought food for him, mm -hmm. you know, food, um, food uh, the, the bread and the meat, and and he had the water by the brook. The Bible says okay. your bread and water be sure, but then the brook dried up, and God said, "Go to this woman." And so when he went to the woman, he found the woman there. Uh -huh. And all the woman had, you know, was just sufficient for her to bake one bread, the sufficient bread for her and her child, and then they will die. And then Elijah's big offer was this. He said, do all of that. that he says, was... do all of that, but give me to eat. Amen. Do all of that, but give me to eat. You know, this woman is prepared to die. And so Elijah was asking her to... Exercise faith, faith in not God. in him, but in God. And that's the point. And this is very important. And, and that's the point that we are trying to emphasize with this story. Yes. That what God asks us to do, it needs to be a, in an act of faith. It's a spiritual, yes, it's a spiritual principle because we need to believe what God says and accept his word. But also, it's an exercise of our faith. You yes. know, when, when God asks us to do something, it's because he will provide or, or, and or you know the rest of the story, Pastor, is because this, this woman and her child, they were able to have food for many more days after this. They survived the famine, all right? But uh, today, most people will say, um, if, uh, put it in our context, you know, if the pastor would ask the, the, the person, um, the <laughs> typical person out there to do this, you know, it will come with a big challenge for them. Yes. But God is inviting us, just like he invited this woman back then, the kids well, of Elijah, you know, to exercise faith, not in Elijah, not in the pastor, but exercise faith in God. Well, let, let, us be, let us be practical, Pastor, because in these days, God also asks us the same thing. We are living in a crisis, time yes. of crisis. We just um, passed through COVID-19, and now we have this world crisis with the war going on there in um, Ukraine. Ukraine, and it will be in, affecting the world at a la large scale. So... When God is asking us to give our tithes and to return a faithful offering, is God is telling us then that I will provide for you. Just, just try me. I am the same yesterday, today. You know, so I am encouraging you, brethren, if you have never heard about this before, what? Tithes and, and how is that work? Well, that's the way oh God wants to prosper you, wants to bless you. That's yes. the way oh God wants to show you that he cares about you. And that's the way oh God wants you to be a practice the big P. To defeat the big C, that is covetousness. As all the big P is, is a philanthropy. Philanthropy and also the P in health that has to do with the you know phytochemicals. Phytochemical that is fruits and, and herbs and all these things that can keep your health strong yes. and beat cancer. That's the way how we overcome sin. All right. So there was a person also struggling with the physical, the spiritual um, cancer, covetousness was Levi Matthew. And in Luke 5, 27 and 28, it says, and after these things, there was publican, uh, Levi sitting at the receipt of custom, and Jesus said to him, follow me. And Levi Matthew rose up, and he followed Christ. All right, so Levi was suffering from this spiritual cancer. He coveted money. Mm. All right, that is why he was a tax collector. Okay. He coveted money for himself, but one day Jesus confronted him, and Jesus invited him to follow um, Jesus. And so we see that um, Levi Matthew responded to that call and he gave his life, the highest form of philanthropy pastor. Hey, he gave a life man. to Jesus Christ, a life to service, a life to helping others to be saved. Man, today Christ says to those the same words to you and to me. All right? Follow me. Will you follow Jesus? Follow me 
to the cross, to Calvary. Follow me in each Sabbath to church, to the sanctuary. Follow me to the water of baptism. What is your answer today? Amen. That's our call for you today. God wants not only our means or money, but to be faithful in our tithes and our offering, but he wants our all or yes. everything. And, and when we make sacrifice to obey God, he always gives us reward. All right, God says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, that he will wipe away our tears from our eyes. There will be no more death, no more sorrow, nor crying. Neither will there be any more pain, for former things will be passed away. Amen. And in Revelation 2.10, says, What will be my reward? It says that fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you in prison, that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days, but be thou faithful unto death. And, and the reward is, God will give us a crown, crown of life. Of so life. we oh. come down to the end of this seminar for today, the second part of the seminar. And, and what, our choice, Pastor. The choice is, I will combat the big C of cancer with the big P of phytochemicals. phytochemicals. In other words, eat more vegetables, more fruits, more nuts, more grains. Also on the spiritual level, we will fight this, the big C of covetousness with the big P with philanthropy. So, like Matthew, I will arise and obey the command of Jesus. Follow me. Will you? May God bless you as you make this step to follow Jesus. And remember, you could always contact the team here at ATN if you want Bible studies, if you want prayers, if you want to surrender your life to Jesus through baptism, contact the ATN team and we could make the arrangement right here for you. Amen. That your desire could be a, a reality. Okay. Remember to contact us, send us a message, and we want to finish today with a word of prayer. Our time has expired, so we will close up with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful lesson today that we have learned how to overcome the, the cancer of sin um, with your powerful word and also by being a, a philanthropist. Please, God, help us also that we can... Um, be obedient to you. We can trust you. We can depend on you. Bless our viewers, Lord, and help them also that they will practice the principles of health by overcoming the big sea of cancer, by practicing uh, eating well and eating more vegetables, more fruits, more nuts, more grains, more plant-based, so that they can have all the nutrients to fight the sea of cancer. Now, Father, as we leave this lesson, as we conclude today, we pray that your presence will be with all our viewers. And that your Holy Spirit will continue to work in their life to surrender totally to you and to trust you. And one day receive the great reward when Jesus comes. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Hope to have you on our next uh, study. God bless and keep, your, keep yourself safe. And thank you for joining us. Until then. Thank you.